Once I was lovely, you held me in my prime. Now you hear me echoing in the cave of time. Two albums of experimental music. He's had three books published in less than a year. His seventh novel, Friend of My Youth. His second book of poetry, Sweet Shop, and a collection of essays, The Origins of Dislike. Last summer, he hosted his debut art exhibition, The Sweet Shop Owners of Calcutta and Other Ideas in India. He's been called one of the most talented and versatile writers of his generation. I'm delighted to welcome the award-winning Amit Chowdhury to the show. Amit, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being It's a pleasure to have you now. Journalists don't really like artists like you because it's very hard to put you in a box. And we love putting people in a box. Um, you're eclectic yeah. and prolific. Yeah. And there's lots written about you as well as you having written lots of different things. I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you, how do you describe yourself? I mean, firstly, I want to say that it's... N uh, publishers don't like people like me either. <laughs> you know, I mean, my, I, I, I think my publisher would uh, ideally want me to just write novels. Um, n and not even branch out into other forms of writing. So here I am doing poetry and the essay as well. Um, I think uh, a, a lot of people, especially in, in, in a world where the market dictates that you need to sell something, and if you need to sell something, it has to be clearly identifiable. So it, once you begin to blur those boundaries, it begun, be, becomes uh, difficult to sell that product. Uh, um, then, then you say that well, this is I'm, I'm not creating products. I I, I am a kind of fitful, uh, indecisive kind of person, but that is part of my creativity. Um, so I'm going off in different directions, and and so I would I would call myself maybe uh, an experimenter. An experimenter is somebody who's ready to take the plunge in in different kind of directions uh, and genres. I think that's a great way to be described, an experimenter. And you've been um, living in France, in Paris, yeah. since September. So after Mumbai and Calcutta, London, Oxford, what do you think of um, the Paris of today? I was, I was apprehensive that it would be museum-like. I was apprehensive that, you know, that the Eiffel Tower would be following me about. <laughs> uh, um, but but uh, I, firstly, I ended up staying in a flat in an area near the metro station Chateau Rouge, and that itself was quite something. It's a basically a West African marketplace. Uh, when I first arrived there in last September, I thought this is really interesting. But how much can I take of this? <laughs> can I take so much interesting, you know, environment for the next nine months? But now I've really got attached to that Paris, and to be able to cross the road, Boulevard Barbès, and go into Montmartre, you know, uh, and that everything is contiguous uh, in that crossroads with each other. A, a lot is kind of um, in proximity. And in the past, um, you ran a campaign to save Calcutta's unique architecture. Mm -hmm. um, you've been in Paris during the time um, of the fire at Notre yeah. Dame. Yeah. And which caused so much sort of outpouring of sentiment from around the world. Mm. How do you explain this sort of attachment to architecture, to heritage? Things in the last 100 or 200 years have become part of a world inheritance of modernity. So that when the Bahamiya Buddha came down uh, or, or were, you know, destroyed, Buddhas were destroyed, um, we all felt uh, a, a kind of um, anxiety about what was going on. Um, similarly, with Notre, Notre Dame, I think it's part of a world inheritance of things rather than just human beings. Of course, one needs to mourn human beings as well, and the horrific things have been happening in the last week in, in various parts of the world. But there is something also about this inheritance of things. Um, in your book of poems, which you've got in front of you, Sweet Shop, you explore different memories of your own heritage, your youth, um, in Bombay, as you call Mumbai. This um, is a, uh, about Calcutta and Bombay, yeah. Um, we'd be delighted if you'd read one of those poems sure, for us. Sure. Um, well, I'm going to read out the title poem, Sweet Shop. The whole universe is here. Every colour, a few on the verge of being barely tolerable. Every shape as well as minute flourishes created in the prehistory 
of each shandesh by precise pinches. The horizontal trays brim, but don't tremble, with mass and form. The serrations are near invisible. You'd miss them if they were deeper or clearer. The soft oblongs and the minuscule, hard, pillow-shaped ones are generated so neatly that instinct alone could have given them shape and no mould. In the harmony shielded by the glass is an unnoticed balance of gravity and play. So we see different memories of India. I wanted to ask you a question about the India of today. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first country that banned Salman Rushdie's satanic verses. Uh, the writer Taslima Nazreen was, was hounded out of Calcutta for her writing, um, as was uh, the artist M.F. Hussain for his art. Mm. In a very fast-changing India, mm. um, what is the state of freedom of expression there? Not good. It hasn't been good for a long time, because when you, when you talk about uh, the banning of the satanic verses, th this happened under a Congress government, uh, uh, Indira Gandhi's son, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, made this happen. It was a key, key moment, I think, in also, in some ways, facilitating the resentments that led to the rise of the BJP. There were other reasons. Um, so, um, and now we have, a, a, we've had a BJP government for a long time. The elections are happening. We don't know what's going to happen. And uh, um, it, uh, the BJP is, is uh, extremely and openly against uh, freedom of expression. Another term for them would, would mean for the further erosion of, of those restrictions uh, on them uh, and greater restrictions on the freedom, on freedom of expression. Uh, uh, and, and, and so it is worrying. Uh, it's also worrying how the, the secular classes have in a, in a way failed uh, to, to make a case for the importance of what they believe in, including free, uh, freedom of expression. And this is not just true of India, it's true of America. Uh, it's why Trump came in. A certain class of people in America were laughing at Trump, but may, basically were only audible to each other. So I, 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 I feel worried that something similar ha has been going on in India for, for a while. Uh, However, um, the last time the BJP was thrown out, I think it was mainly thrown out by the rural and working classes. So that, we shall see. And in your new novel, you sort of revisit Mumbai. Um, well, the narrator does, who also has um, the same name as you. He also has lots in common with you. Uh, you studied at UCL and Oxford. You're a talented musician. And you've written a novel set in Mumbai called The Immortals, just as the narrator has. Um, is this auto-fiction? You know, I'd never heard this word before my, my, this book was reviewed. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and I've been doing similar things uh, for, for, for years. I mean, right from my first novel. Uh, that is, exploring the overlap between text and story and life without necessarily putting a life story in it in any traditional sense. When you, when you think about life story, you think about what happened to that person. While for me, life is mm, existence in all its randomness. It just so happens that I am the one who is mm, privy to that r randomness and being nudged by it at every moment. And this, this is the exploration. So I, I, I've been doing that right from the beginning. And have tried not to make the pretense that it's made up uh, uh, to, to create a kind of frisson between um, the fact that it's been composed and written and yet that it's, it's out there is what I've been exploring for a while. Ahmed, we always finish um, the show with our guest's cultural pick mm. of the moment. Yeah. What have you chosen for us? Um, I've chosen, in fact... Um, to highlight a campaign for a museum in Calcutta, a folk art museum, a very important museum called the Guru Shodai Museum. Uh, the museum uh, was named after the person who, whose collection basically comprises what the museum has 
uh, Guru Shodai Dotto, uh, an, an Indian civil servant who mainly collected all kinds of specimens of fascinating Bengali folk art in the 30s. Uh, when you say folk art, you, you mustn't think that this is some kind of immemorial thing. Uh, these are things that are happening at that point in history, which he collected then. I, I, Indian folk art is as vibrant a response to modernity as, as art, art house cinema is or great literature is. The only difference is that with folk art, a great deal of refinement and aesthetic uh, kind of delicacy is devoted to things which are ephemeral. This um, museum collects these wonderful ephemeral objects. And so it's in danger of, of you know, being shut down. So anybody watching this, I, I mean, I would say to them, if they're interested in what they see, um, they can go and find out on the net about how to donate uh, towards keeping this museum going. Well, we'll leave you with images of the museum. Amit Chowdhury, thank you so much for joining us here on France 24. Your works, Friend of My Youth, Sweet Shop and the Origins of Dislike are available in English now. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.